Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Lord God, our Father, Holy Spirit, our Comforter, we adore and glorify you. We magnify your, you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us all together once again to listen to your word. Father, we thank you for Brother Vincent, your instrument. And as we listen today to today's teaching led by your spirit, Lord, Help us to understand the depths of your love as pure compassion, Lord, and embrace your mercy, Lord, so that we can, we can see your love and your faithfulness, which is unfailing, Lord. Help us, Lord, to build our lives on the foundation of your son, Jesus, so that we are able to withstand every tribulation which we come across, Lord. You said you are the door, Lord. You are the way, the truth and the life. You are really the door, Jesus, and there's no other way. There's only this way. Help us, Lord, to understand this truth so that we can enter this door and our lives are formed forever. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the precious gift of the Holy Spirit you have given us through your Son, Jesus, for the Spirit of God reveals all the hidden treasures of all the mysteries of your hidden kingdom, Lord, opening our spiritual eyes as we begin to believe by faith, because it is true. When we begin to exercise our faith, we begin to receive the supernatural. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the wisdom and understanding as we have now to put your word into action after we listen to it. We already thank you, Lord. And this word is Christ the eternal son of God. We make this prayer through Christ, the eternal son of God. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Sister Joyce, for that very spiritual prayer. And my brothers and sisters, a warm welcome to each one of you. Today, we are going to reflect, as I said to you at the introduction, we are going to conclude Mark chapter 6. And we are going to study today from verses 53 to 56. We've just got four verses. But Three. before we go to today's gospel passage, my brothers and sisters, we need to understand the missing link between the last few verses that we studied on Saturday and how we connect it to today. Because if we don't do that, there is a possibility of misunderstanding the passage. They will not understand the context. And as a result, we will not be able to take the full message and understand the impact of what the context was and how things really shaped in today's gospel passage. So let's first read today's gospel passage from Mark chapter 6. Verses 53 to 56. Mark chapter 6, verses 53 to 56. Mark chapter 6, verses 53 to 56. <clears throat> Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right, let's go ahead and read the gospel passage of today. And when they had passed over, they came into the land of Genesaret and drew to the shore. And when they were come out of the ship, straight away they knew him and ran to that whole region round about and began to carry about in those beds those that were sick where they heard he was. And whithersoever he entered into villages or cities or country, they laid the sick in the streets and besought him that they might touch if it were but the border of his garment. And as many as touched him were made whole. Praise God. 
Thank you, Jesus. So we come to verse number 53 and it says, and when they had passed over, they came into the land of Genesaret and drew to the shore. Now, you know, my brothers and sisters, when you read this verse and you don't understand the context of the previous things, what happened, this is where we need to, you know, understand what happened before. You know, when you look at verses, you know, when we came on Saturday, when we were reflecting the gospel on Saturday, it was, we started from verses, uh, uh, I think it was from verses 29 to 34. And in verses 29 to 34, we saw that Jesus was now welcoming all his disciples whom he had sent out in pairs. And he had told them, let's go to a quiet place. Let's go into a desert place and let us take a little bit of rest. Let's take that much deserved rest because the disciples had just returned from their mission. They had been sent by Jesus two by two and therefore they would have stayed over, they would have spent a lot of time healing the people, talking to them, asking them to repent, preparing them for their, for their Lord's, uh, for Jesus' visit to their, to their villages. And therefore, now that they had come back to Jesus on the appointed day, they were all recounting to Jesus what they had done on their mission trip. And you know, my brothers and sisters, as Jesus began to hear them, he said to them, Okay, it's time for you boys. You deserve a much needed break. You deserve a much needed rest. Let's go across to a quiet place and let's have a little bit of a vacation. Let's have a rest so that you are recharged for our mission trip, for the next mission trip. But we know all that what happened. You know, they went into that desert place and people realized where they were going. And by the time they reached the quiet desert place, people by the thousands began to come to them. Thousands of people began to follow them in the desert area. And therefore, since we missed that reflection between verses 35 to 52, what happened there? Jesus began to teach the people. Jesus began to share the good news to them. His heart felt, you know, compassion to them. He realized that they were like sheep without a shepherd. He realized that they were people who really wanted to hear the word of God, they were really troubled. And in spite of the physical man being so tired, in spite of him being exhausted, in spite of his dis disciples being exhausted physically, and they needed that rest, Jesus allowed the physical man not to get the rest, but he chose the spiritual man to take over and he began to minister to those people. And what happened? By the time he was teaching those people, my brothers and sisters, it was so late in the night that the disciples now who were already tired told their master, Master, please send these people away. Please send them away. We have been required rest. We are tired. And that's the time Jesus asked for somebody who had something with them. Somebody came with five loaves and two fish and he performed the miracle he did not send the crowds empty away hungry. He fed them with five loaves and two fish. The not of God tells us that there yeah. were over 5,000 people. Talk. There were more than 5,000 people. Man. There were more than 5,000 people who basically were fed with five loaves and two fish. Again, my brothers and sisters, this is something that you can see in verses 35 to 52. And having fed the crowd, having fed the people with five loaves and two fish, Jesus had told his disciples to go across to the other side. He was in a remote place. They had come by that boat. Now he has fed the people. He sends the crowds home away after feeding them. And he tells his disciples, go across to the other side. And he goes up the mountain to pray. He goes to the mountain to pray. And while he's praying on that mountain, he observes his disciples who are already tired. And as they are going by the boat, the wind is against them. And the disciples are really exhausted. There's a danger of them collapsing because, you know, a, a distance of a, probably a couple of hours was now almost five, six hours. And this is the time Jesus came walking on the water. Jesus came on walking on the water with them and they brought him into the boat. That's the time Peter walked on the water and then 
they got across to the other side. So today's gospel passage, I'm not going to go and start and teach you about, you know, what happened between 35 to 52. We have done that before in a class of this. But what I wanted to say is they were in a desert place. They had already fed the crowd. Jesus had sent the people away. He had sent his disciples back across to the other side. Now Jesus from the mountain praying the whole night he has walked on the water to his disciples and they have reached across onto the other side of Genesaret. So when you go there and read verse number 53, it says, and when they had passed over, they came into the land of Genesaret and drew to the shore. They came to the land of Genesaret and drew to the shore. You know, sisters and brothers, please listen to this very carefully. I, I'm sure it's going to bless each one of us if we listen very attentively. What was the purpose of all this effort of Jesus to make his disciples go across to the other side? Remember, it was the end of the day. The disciples were tired. They had actually wanted to take rest. But Jesus was not able to allow his disciples to take rest. On the contrary, they were ministering to the people. Jesus was preaching to the people. And at the end of preaching to the people, when the disciples told their master, master, send the crowds away hungry. You know, there's no food here. Jesus had multiplied five loaves and two fish. And after he feeds the crowd, goes to the mountain to pray, he sends the disciples on to the other side. So the question is, what was the purpose for all this effort on the part of Jesus to make his disciples go on to the other side? You know, what was the reason? What was the hurry, my brothers and sisters, for Jesus to tell his disciples? He could have told his disciples, okay, boys, we are here on this, on, on, on this, on this you know, on this uh, desert area. I'll go to the mountain to pray. You'll just take rest. And, you know, we'll see about something in the morning tomorrow. But, you know, my brothers and sisters, the very reason Jesus told his disciples to go to the other side was because of ministry. Because of ministry, the word of God tells us that as they went across to the other side, crowds came and received his ministry. When, when, when Jesus went across to the side of Genesaret, people were flocking to him in order to hear him. You know, my brothers, if you remember this entire chapter of chapter six, you know, the disciples, they were now rowing in this boat. The wind was against them. And had the disciples turned back, you know, Jesus had gone to the mountain. It was easier for the disciples to just make a U-turn and come back to the shore where Jesus had performed the miracle of the five loaves and two fish. Instead of rowing against the wind to go where their master had said. And had they turned back while rowing across the lake, despite the wind against them to the shore, you know, my brothers and sisters, where they had started from, they would have missed this opportunity to do ministry. They would have missed this opportunity because people on the other side were ready to receive Jesus. Remember, this was the same side where Jesus had been rejected because on that side, he had cast out those evil spirits and he had put them into the swine. And it was in that place where the people, after they saw the swines had been cast off, they had told Jesus to leave their town. They had told Jesus to leave their village. They had told Jesus to leave their territory. And you know, my brothers and sisters, why I'm bringing this up is, you know, all the, uh, the difficulties or the adversities that we face in life are designed by the devil to stop our ministry. Just think about it for a moment. You know, every impediment, every obstacle, Every adversity that we face in our life comes not from God. It comes from the enemy. It comes from the adversity. It comes from, the, from Satan in order to stop ministry. You know, the, you know, the devil doesn't want us to reach you know, to the other show because he knows there is ministry on the other show. Think about it, my brothers and sisters. You know, if the disciples had to stay where Jesus was, they would have not gone across to the other side because on the other side, 
there was a lot of you know a big harvest was waiting there were a lot of people waiting to receive jesus now some of you will say that was the place where jesus had been told to leave that territory just in mark chapter 6 because he had cast out those evil spirits and you know my brothers and sisters this is precisely the reason why you and i should not take a u turn we should never take a u turn and come back to the place where we started before you know we started our walk with jesus before we started our walk with the lord never ever take a u turn and go to that same vomit to go back to that same life where we started warm after we started you know walking with jesus you know we will we will not drown we will not drown but we will not be able to make it to the show we will not be able to make it to the show if we do, we take a u if we don't proceed and we take a u turn remember every opportunity in life every impediment in our life if we are really with the lord jesus christ every obstacle that is coming against us is an indication that on the other side there is lot of ministry there are lot of opportunities there is lot of you know lot of harvest waiting because people need to hear the good news how many of us today my brothers and sisters if we see the rain come if we see the weather change if we see you know there are road blocks if we hear that people are having covid 19 we hear some obstacle whatsoever we hear the churches are closed how many of us are very comfort to comfortable to sit in the comfort of our rooms and just watch the television and you know just let our time pass how many of us my brothers and sisters think about it those disciples had they taken a u turn and come back surely they would not have drowned but they would have not made it across the show on to the other side and there there would have been people waiting by the thousands in order to be ministered to that's what we are going to see in the in the verses ahead and you know my brothers and sisters when we look at ourselves today think of those disciples at that time they did not have the spirit of god on the inside they did not have the holy spirit living on them on the inside the holy spirit came inside of them only on the day of pentecost so they had to have the physical jesus next to them in order to comfort them to assure them today when you and i have received the holy spirit how many of us have chosen the comforts of our homes and also the comfort of what we do instead of moving on and you know bearing fruit that will last you know sometimes you are very comfortable doing ministry in one little room we are very comfortable doing ministry in our little you know congregations we are very comfortable doing ministry inside our own parish halls we are very comfortable for the people to come in there do some service and everything is fine but you know my sister and brothers how many of us are ready to step out of our comfort zone how many of us are ready to go across the show in spite of all the impediments because there is a big harvest god wants to make you and me usable in his kingdom but how many of us are shying away and not bearing the fruit and every day day is passing by you know sister and brothers how many of us are just wasting time instead of releasing you know the tremendous potential that god has put on the inside of us think about it for a moment you know god has put inside a believer he has put his own presence god is living on the inside of us and there is this tremendous potential that god has put on the inside of each one of us and dear brothers and sisters it is said you'll be surprised it is said that you know the place where you can find the maximum potential the maximum unused potential is in the graveyard in the graveyard if you go to the graveyards and have a look at all those you know those those graves where there were people who are buried that is the place where you will find a maximum potential which will never be used you know so many lie down there in 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 death you know like dead bodies which are buried right now with all that potential which had never been used and therefore right now as we are living right now as we you know we have this we have this opportunity to get up each morning and breathe that we have got all our faculties there is so much of potential lying on the inside of us when we know that we have got christ on the inside that we have the living god 
living on the inside of us. Unlike those disciples who did not have the Holy Spirit, did not have God living on the inside of them. But if you are truly born again, you truly have accepted Christ, you have received the gift of the Holy Spirit, then because of the presence of God, my sister and brothers, there is so much of potential lying on the inside of us. And if you are not using it, one fine day, we will just be a skin, one of those in the statistics, one of those numbers which will be buried in the grave where all this potential which the Lord put on the inside of us was never brought out because we chose the comforts of our house. We chose the comfort of our room. We chose the comfort of our air condition. We chose the comfort of our own little ministry. We chose the comfort of our little service that we do because we just refused to step out in faith but we took a U-turn and came back to the show. I hope my sister and brothers, you're getting this at the beginning of this reflection. There is a tremendous potential in each one of us. And if we can understand this potential, you and I can make such a big difference to our world today. You know, we have got technology that, that has never been ever, you know, uh, applicable or available to those disciples 2000 years ago. We have got such means of transport we have got the internet, we have got the social media, we have got the fast cars, we've got aeroplanes, we've got beautiful means of transportation, we've got fast means of transportation. And in spite of all that we have, many of us have chosen the comforts of our, of our rooms, have chosen the comforts of our little ministry, have chosen the comfort of our little service, and we are not doing what the Lord has called us to do. I hope we are all getting it as we go further in today's reflection. Mark chapter 6, verse number 54. And when they were come out of the ship, straight away they knew him. Now my question to you, my brothers and sisters, is as soon as Jesus and his disciples... Now remember, Jesus was not in the boat initially, but when Jesus joined his disciples on the waters... They brought him on the waters and the, and the ship immediately got across to the, to the other side at Genesaret. Now the question is, how or why did these people know Jesus? That's what they say. And when they were come out of the ship, straight away they knew him. Straight away they knew Jesus. How did they know him? Why? What, what, what was the reason why they, they knew Jesus already? The reason my sister and brothers was, because it was the previous trips that Jesus had made in that region. He had cast out those demons, as I told you in Mark chapter 6. And he had cast out those demons from a man where there were 2,000 demons. You will see that in the same chapter, the previous chapter, Mark chapter 5. It is from verses 1 to 15 or 1 to 16, I believe. You will see there that Jesus had cast out the evil spirits of a man who was a demoniac. Where all those swine, all I mean, all those demons were cast into the swine, and all those 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 uh, those those uh, pigs drowned in the lake of Genesaret. All those uh, pigs died in the lake of Genesaret. So after Jesus had been rejected, you know, when as soon as Jesus cast out those evil spirits, those people ran to the town, told their owners that you know Jesus has destroyed all their swine, and you know what happened. They all came and they told Jesus to leave their town because of the, of the tremendous loss that, you know, these people incurred. You know, my brothers and sisters, at that time, they had rejected Jesus. They had rejected Jesus out of fear. You will see that, I believe, in Mark chapter 5, verses 16 or 17 somewhere. You will see that they actually pleaded Jesus to leave their territory because they were so fearful. But by the time... And, you know, all this has happened. Jesus had left that place. They had gone across to the other side. He had, you know, uh, you know, told his disciples to go to the different places. You know, he had, he had, he had, he had ministered to those thousands of people by the, by the desert area. And he had come back to the same place at Genesaret. You know what had happened? The testimony of that man who had been completely set free had prepared their hearts for his second appearance. You know, you know the, the testimony of that man who had been set free from those demonic spirits. He went to those 10 cities. If you read, he wanted to come with Jesus. And Jesus said, don't you come with me. Don't you come with me. You go and tell your family, tell your friends, tell everyone what the Lord has done to you. And you know, my brothers and sisters, 
this man very faithfully he went and he told everybody and therefore his testimony was something that prepared the hearts of the people in genesaret so that when jesus appeared the second time you know they were eager for jesus's ministry they were eager for jesus's ministry you know sister brother these were the same people who begged jesus to leave their ministry to, 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 to leave their territory and go away but when he came the second time they were eager for his ministry that's why they knew him straight away that's what it says in verse 54 and they straight away knew him you know my sister and brothers the same is true even today for each one of us it is true for each one of us who believe in the lord jesus christ you know if we have a spirit filled ministry if we are really you know guided by the holy spirit is the spirit of god that is leading us as you know not just our own religious spirit not just something we want to do you know we sometimes many people they want to do something they want to feel you know that they are useful in life so they go about and do something but you know my sister and brothers i am not talking about the people who want to feel good about doing something i am not talking about people who want to you know get a pat on their back for doing something i am talking about a spirit filled ministry so if you are doing a spirit filled ministry people will welcome us as the testimonies of those who we have ministered start reaching out to them think about it you know as you begin to minister our job is to minister to people their testimonies are going to let people know that there is something happening in this ministry there is something happening in this particular place there is something happening in the body of christ and therefore people are going to come to hear because they believe if this is what the lord is doing through this ministry or god is doing something to this person or god is using this particular uh, you know set of people in order to you know bring the good news to them the testimonies of those people who are being set free by the truth of god's word is going to bring people to welcome us wherever we go you know sister and brothers think about it like this you know you can go to a place you can go there and you can do your own thing without being directed by the holy spirit many people today they want to do a lot of things they want to visit they want to do a lot of things but is it directed by the holy spirit is there a plan in place are we really directed by the holy spirit what to do how to do what to do when to do if we are not doing it we are doing it based on our own flesh remember you can sometimes be an irritant literally people will say to their mind oh my this person has come back again oh my this person is going to be another headache for us because there is no life that comes out of them and therefore we have to be led by the spirit of god and therefore a believer is one who is going to be led by the spirit of god to bring life into everybody you know the world today my sister and brothers is a world that is decaying a world that is dying without christ and therefore the world of today like just like the world when jesus came to this earth was dying so there are so many people today who think that they know jesus they have only heard about him they do not know him personally because they don't know his word and therefore when you and i who are filled with the spirit of god we are really you know investing time studying his word we are knowing the word knowing means we have an experiential experience with the word we have seen the power of the word ourselves when we go out and we share the good news to others getting out of our comfort zones i tell you my brothers and sisters the testimonies of those who are going to come out and share it is going to bring us great welcome to those who want to hear more from those who want to be ministered to from those who can see the glory in what we do amen verse number 55 and ran to the whole region round about and began to carry about in beds those that were sick where they heard he was now again you know it was it was i would say the healing ministry of jesus that brought the crowds to him it was the healing ministry of jesus you know my brothers and sisters think about it for a moment what was it that attracted the people to jesus do you think that he was a good preacher oh surely he was did he you know give some very good oratory oh yes he did did he preach the truth oh yes he did but after he preached the truth he also confirmed the truth that he preached with accompanying signs and wonders with accompanying signs and wonders and dear brothers and sisters when we come to the 21st century church i want to ask this question to each one of you why would you think or why would we all think 
that we can do anything any any more without with you know you know anything more without jesus how do you think we can do anything more without jesus how can anyone think without the power of the holy spirit without the anointing of the holy spirit how can you and i do anything more than jesus without the anointing of the holy spirit he said you know in john chapter 14 verse number 12 he said if you believe in me you will do the same works that i did you shall even do greater works my question to you my brother and sister is if we don't have this anointing we are not aware of the spirit of god within us we are not directed by the spirit of god we just go about life you know we and when we wake up in the morning there is no sense of purpose we just think what shall i do today i'm feeling in a good mood let me go out and do something i'm in a good mood let me go and do something if i'm in a bad mood let me sit and put my thumb in my mouth and sulk the whole day so i'm just that i'm just controlled by my emotions and feelings i'm never directed by the spirit of god and so my whole life is based on my emotions my feelings the environment the situation whether it's the people are available on the other side so everything is directed by circumstances you know my brothers and sisters these people who were coming to jesus were coming because they finally had someone who could address their concerns he could address their concerns of health and he could even give them a direction for their eternity think about it my sister and brothers every time you step out to minister the gospel to anybody you must keep this in mind that you are going out to be a solution to somebody you are the solution to somebody's problem therefore when you are going out to be a solution to somebody you cannot be a solution to somebody without the presence of the holy spirit you cannot be a solution to somebody without the anointing of the holy spirit you cannot go and do ministry work without knowing whom you have on the inside with you and there were brothers and sisters these people were running after jesus because finally finally after all these pharisees these priests these scribes these lawyers all these philosophers who had who had gone and done theology and all the stuff that they had studied they just couldn't even do anything all that they were doing was telling them don't do this don't do that do this do that but they could not address the situation they could not address the problems of the people because they could even not give them any hope of eternity because they themselves they had no idea where they were going themselves you know my sister and brothers the moment you come to christ the moment you are born again the moment you receive the holy spirit you know within yourself through the holy spirit that first and foremost you are saved you have the in you know the indwelling presence of the holy spirit and now what you have you can go out and give to somebody if you don't know what you have if you're not even aware or you're sure whether you are saved you will go out totally confused and you will try to confuse other people you will become an agent of the devil so many a times it's better to stay where you are and not damage the body of christ it's better for you to park yourself in your air conditioned room it's better to you to stay in your comfort zone than to step out and cause confusion in the body of christ because there are so many false prophets who have stepped out today because they are not interested in the souls they are not interested in the welfare of people they are not interested in the eternity of people they are interested in their own pockets they are more interested in what is going to be their benefit and therefore it is very important for us to understand that when we are led by the spirit of god the spirit of god is directing us we will always be able to be a solution to somebody and in the end we will be able to help them to receive their salvation through the gospel and we will get them also to experience this you know the presence of god and the assurance that their eternity is also guaranteed remember my sister and brothers when jesus said those who believe in me shall do the same works that i did he was saying these are the miracles the signs and wonders and when he said they shall do greater works he was talking about when we step out and share the good news we will also bring people into the kingdom we will make them born again by the by the by the preaching of the gospel and that will be the greater thing that even jesus could not do because the holy spirit had still not come when jesus was on this earth he had to leave from here go back to the father and then send the holy spirit after which the disciples could go out and preach the gospel so he said you shall do greater works than me was only because the holy spirit had not come among people the disciples did not have the holy spirit until jesus had gone back to the father 
and then he had sent the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. So imagine, my sister, but the, the responsibility, the accountability that we have as believers of the Lord Jesus Christ, if we are truly born again and we really have the Spirit of God, we have the anointing of God, we are called to step out and be a blessing and help to increase and bring profit into the kingdom of God. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go to our final verse for today. Verse number 56. And whithersoever he entered into villages or cities or country, they laid the sick in the streets and besought him that they might touch it, touch if it were but the border of his garment. And as many as touched him were made whole. As many as touched him were made whole. You know, my sister and brothers, I hope you are really following this gospel passage in a way that you begin to understand every word. You know, many people were healed by simply touching the border of Jesus' garment. By touching the hem of Jesus' garment, people were getting healed. And you know, sister and brothers, if you really have been following this, the, you know, the gospel reading, really studying it yourself, not just coming to Bible class, and hearing it only this one hour, but if you're really studying it, you would realize all this happened because of the account of the woman. Remember the woman with the issue of blood? This woman had touched the hem of Jesus' garment and was completely healed. Remember that in Mark chapter 5, verse number 27. Can we put that please? You know, in Mark chapter 5, verse number 27, this woman who had an issue of blood for 18 long years, she had said, if I touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. That's what she had said. And you know, my brothers and sisters, once she got healed, once she got whole, once she began to see the blessings, once the news of what miracle got out, got, you know, what she received, many people began to receive inspiration and began to do the same. If they said, if this can be done to her, why not to us? We also will touch the hem of Jesus' garment. Let's read this. Mark chapter 5, verse number 27. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. 28. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. So, brothers and sisters, here was a woman who was an inspiration. She was like the trendsetter. You know, I don't know whether you see in today's world there are people who wear a particular, they are, they are some very famous personality. They wear some particular type of clothes and because they are so famous and they come on the social media, everybody wants to imitate them because they are setting a trend. If they cut their hair in a particular way like Ronaldo, everybody thinks they can be a Ronaldo by cutting their hair that way. If they see somebody, you know, making a tattoo of something, they also want a tattoo. If they really see somebody, you know, wearing a particular type of attire, they also want to do that. So these famous people also set a, a trend, set a trend in, in the clothes. This woman had set a trend where by her testimony, she had touched the hem of Jesus' garment and her testimony had inspired all these people and they also did the same. You know, my sister and brothers, today, many will come to Christ if you and I who are believers can demonstrate the power of the spirit as we speak and we proclaim God's word. Let me say this again. If you and I are believers of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are truly anointed by the Holy Spirit. You know, we are powered by, we have got this power of the Holy Spirit on the inside of us because we really know whom we have. We have the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Then when you and I open our mouth, I tell you, my brothers and sisters, we will be able to demonstrate that power of the spirit and as we open our mouth and start speaking the word of God, many people will come to Christ because of the true preaching of the gospel. You know, if people are preaching just, you know, religion, just preaching some false doctrines, preaching what happened in 1942, preaching what happened, you know, in the Middle Ages, preaching about something which is not according to the word of God. On the contrary, they're going to confuse the people because there is no set direction. There is no something that, you know, people can look forward to and apply. It's all theory. It's all doctrines. It's all philosophy. But when you and I go out and open our mouth and teach somebody under the anointing of the Holy Spirit and we demonstrate what we teach with the power and signs and wonders, 
I tell you, my brothers and sisters, many people are going to be attracted to Christ. Just like this woman who touched the hem of Jesus' garment got healed, she went out and she gave her testimony. And so many people began to touch Jesus' garment because of her testimony. They were inspired. You know, sisters and brothers, before we end today, I want to show you this last verse from Mark chapter 16. We're going to jump to chapter 16, verse number 20. Mark chapter 16, verse number 20. You know, in Mark chapter 16, verse number 20, can we read that, please? And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. And they went forth. This is the disciples. They had already, you know, Jesus had already gone back to the Father. He had sent the Holy Spirit to them. And now with the power of the Holy Spirit, they went forth and they preached everywhere. And the word of God says, the Lord working with them and confirming the word that they preached with signs and wonders. You know, today, my brothers and sisters, why people have got fed up with religion, why people are not attending church services, why people are dwindling in church services. You know, if you see the numbers, you see the statistics, it's really frightening, very frightening, especially among the youth, among the younger people. We don't know how, how much the church is going to survive in the years to come. It's only the middle age generation and the older generation who, even though they cannot go to church, they're still watching it online because of the, you know, it's available online. But among the younger generation, it is, a, it is a very bad statistics. But you know, my sister and brothers, why all this is happening is because the gospel is being preached and there are no accompanying signs. And there's no power in the preaching, absolutely. And as a result, people don't want to hear that same jazz all the time. They don't want to hear all that music all the time because it's the same stuff, powerless stuff, absolutely, you know, coming from the pits, absolutely. And they don't want to even hear it anymore. They are tired of hearing it. But if you and I today can really believe the word, can go out with the power of the Holy Spirit, can go forth and preach the gospel, I tell you, my sister and brothers, we will bring people to Christ. We will bring them to the living God. We will bring profit to the kingdom of God. And most importantly, we will bring fruit into existence that will remain forever. We'll be able to bring those souls into the kingdom that will live forever in the kingdom of God. Amen. Let us pray. Sister Bernadine, let us pray. You can unmute yourself and let's pray. Go ahead, unmute yourself. Sister Bernadine, you can unmute yourself. Yeah. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord, for the teaching today that we heard with Brother Vincent. Lord Jesus, that you manifest in our lives, use us, take control of us, Lord. And as we listen each and every day of our lives and bless each one of us in, in, brother, in, in uh, brother Vincent's teaching and Holy Spirit, that you are there with us, that you are hearing, that who, that we are hearing your word, Lord, that you will guide us through in our lives and multiply in our lives each and every day of our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen, amen, amen. In amen, Jesus' name, amen. I pray. Praise amen. God. Thank you, praise Jesus. God. Thank you, Sister Bernadette. Praise, praise God. Praise God. Amen. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.